You can be friends with people that, that you don't agree with on everything. I mean, we have to restore a degree of civility. That's Jeb Bush saying we need more civility in the race for the presidency. But Donald Trump is on the record saying this. This is not going to be an election based on a nice person. It's going to be based on a competent person. We're tired of the nice people. So which one will get Washington working for us, civility or competence? Hi, everybody. I'm David Asin. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus with Steve Forbes, Rich Carlgaard, Elizabeth McDonald, Sabrina Schaefer, John Tamney, and Bruce Jackson. So, John, do we need more civility or competence inside the Beltway? Well, I want the opposite of competent and civility. I want these guys constantly at each other's throats. When politicians are working in harmony, that means that we see our freedoms reduced and we see the size of government grow in ways that sap the economy's vitality. This notion of bipartisanship as a good thing is vastly overrated. Gridlock <laughs> is the path to growth. All right, Bruce, civility in D.C. or competence, which is more important? Well, I would say civility because, you know, you have situations where people are questioning whether the president is born here. Some of these guys don't even uh, go out for drinks or dinner with each other anymore. And so they're not getting anything done, either good or bad. So, and, you know, alcohol is the root of, uh, you know, it's, hey, what can I say? <laughs> so even, hey, according to Bruce, we all got to go out and get drunk together, right? Yeah, it's my birthday. Uh, what can I say? Why not? I'm all for it. Um, you know, it's five o'clock somewhere in the world. Uh, you know, listen, I'm for competence. Uh, even the founding fathers were known for their verbal savagery. I mean, Thomas Paine called George Washington a treacherous hypocrite. Uh, but they were courageous. They were brave. They didn't uh, back down. They stood up for what was right. And that's what we need in this country is competence at a time when the federal deficit is ballooning out of control and there's really a, a lack of leadership in the White House. And Sabrina, real men and real women can take pushback. They don't need niceness, do they? No, of course not. I mean, I think that competence is ultimately more important than civility, but there is something that, you know, the lack of civility is something that is tremendously concerning now. I don't think there's ever been sort of a golden age of political civility. As Elizabeth notes, there's plenty of, of hostility and caning in the, you know, in Congress and all sorts of things. But, but the reality is that we do need people to get along. This is not a one-party town. Um, I don't think we want that kind of bipartisanship that John is, is also upset about, but I do think that we need to be able to come together on some very important issues. Yeah. Well, Rich, I'm so glad Sabrina brought up caning in Congress because I <laughs> want to do a whole segment on that at some point. Uh, but what about the issue of competency? Let's be specific here. Donald Trump, for example, uh, calls out Carly Fiorina and says she was incompetent when she was heading Hewlett Packard and that the stock value went down about 50% during her tenure, then it went up after she left, which is true, by the way. Uh, but what about that charge? Well, look, board member Tom Perkins wrote a letter in Carly's defense. Uh, so, you know, and he was there sitting uh, right on, uh, had a front row to the whole thing. Look, I think that we need competence. Um, Cap Weinberger and George Schultz in Reagan's administration used to argue behind closed doors all the time. Schultz believed in diplomacy. Cap Weinberger d believed in strength. Um, and, but they hashed it out. All right. Well, Steve, I personally prefer Trump's uh, call for competence. Uh, but, you know, he calls out Carly Fiorina, Trump Enterprise. Now, we should mention, not all of the companies that have the name Trump on it are his. And he personally never went bankrupt. But a lot of the companies with Trump in the name did. Well, they did. And the fact of the matter is, Reagan showed, by the way, you can have civility and competence. They're not mutually exclusive. He got big things done, even though he was nice about it. And in terms of Carly Fiorina, stock prices of all high-tech companies uh, crashed during that period of time. And some have never come back, like uh, stock prices, like Cisco, even though the company's grown. Now, John, I, I love it that we have a lot of non-professional politicians running in this race. I mean, that you look at the top three lineup, none of them were, were politicians or professional politicians. Uh, but there are a lot of politicians. Let's take one of them, Governor Christie, for example. Right now, he's not doing so well in the polls. He has an unfavorable rating of 59 percent. Is that how we judge the competence of the governors running? 
Oh, I, I think it's hard to say that. Let's face it, there's probably a lot that goes, goes into, into his popularity. But the thing, what I think needs to be stressed is that competence in government leads to much bigger government, and that leads to incompetent outcomes. Not because yeah. all politicians are bad, but because they're not disciplined by the marketplace. So you don't want them getting along because we ultimately pay for their harmony. Well, you don't want them getting along. On the other hand, Bruce, you, you, you do want them doing something that is competent, right? I, I, even if it's with a smaller government. Yeah, I think that what you're talking about is like, can people do the job? I mean, for uh, Carly Fiorino, clearly, to get to the point where she became a CEO, she had to have some competence. Um, the same with Hillary Clinton. To get to the point that she became the Secretary of State, she had to have some <laughs> level of competence. It's what have these people done? That's what I would Well, look, that's a good point. And, Emek, I would say that you look at what people have done and you look at the outcome. You look, for example, in Hillary's case, uh, about the way the world is working. She was Secretary of State. That was her job to get the world working better. Most people would say it's not working better right now. Well, I don't think anybody can make the world work better. <laughs> One person, right? I mean, I, I hear you. What were their? But they can screw it well, up. Yeah, a lot. that's right. What were the foreign policy successes? Precise. That's a question. You know, coming back home, though, you know, we have a government now, federal, state, and local. More than 20 million people work for government, federal, state, and local. When we have only what 11 million, 12 million people working in manufacturing jobs, the government, people in government, too often think we work for them. That they somehow have a monopoly claim on taxpayers' wallets. To John's point, mm -hmm. and you know, they are not making policies that will lead to prosperity in this country. That needs to be the mindset for the future right, debates. Right, right. Although, Sabrina, I mean, they don't call them governors for nothing. They call governors governors because they govern. They, that's their job is to govern. And sometimes they do a bad job and sometimes they do a good job. I mentioned Christie. Let's look at another governor, John Kasich from Ohio. He has a big approval rating, 61 percent. It appears that they like, the people of Ohio like the way he is governing. Well, I think it's a, a number of factors that go into those approval ratings. I mean, a lot of it has to do with just connecting with those those different individuals. And I think that sometimes competency is is a signal to people that you're actually sort of a good person or that you are able, you have a grasp of the issues or that you have a sort of consistent ideology. I think that's why a lot of people like Carly Fiorina right now, right? Yeah. You, I think it's fair game to look at her record at, at Hewlett Packard. But I think the way that she's, she has tackled this race, the way that she has addressed certain issues that other candidates have not, that makes her appear competent and mm -hmm. it's something that people are attracted to. And Rich, I got to say about Carly, it may be true that the stock went down under her tenure, but remember, she started as a secretary. To work your way up from secretary to CEO of a company is a hell of an accomplishment. She also held a full-time job uh, and paid her way through Stanford, which is a very expensive university. I have great admiration for Carly. I think Kasich is the most competent politician in the bunch. And I think if Trump could draw a lesson from Reagan, Reagan projected a much angrier persona in the 50s and 60s when he uh, was doing all of these commercials and, and political right. statements. But then he grew, you know, he, he became this uh, much uh, uh, warmer character. Trump yes. needs to move in that direction. And I think he could be very powerful. Steve, uh, that, that seems to be the bottom line of this conversation. We have come to an end point, which is that you might be able to combine the two. And Ronald Reagan, if I'm looking for an example, is one of those examples where he was, he was a decent guy. Uh, everybody liked him, but at the same time, he had a lot of competence in the way he governed. Yes, and there's a third part of it, sense of responsibility. He and Tip O'Neill, the Speaker of the House at the time, didn't much like each other, but they felt they had to get things done, so they cleansed the tax code of tax shelters and cut the top income tax rate from 50% down to 28, and it passed the Senate 97 to 3. Responsibility, you can be civil and get big things done. Well, what a competent... A very competent discussion here, and likable as well. Steve for president. Coming up next, murders on the rise in major cities all over America. It's not just threatening lives, why our economy may also be at risk. You don't want to miss this. Coming right up.